I do a mic check for me. Mic check, 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 one, two. This is going to lead us into the next chapter of our life. Alec led the way fatherhood, right? From brotherhood to fatherhood. We're going to start something. It's going to be a journey. We're not going to put a label on it just yet. It's going to be a... It's gonna be a journey through a digital experience, and we're gonna come up with a name. Um, what name is it that we think that we want? I think we're gonna go with Zaddies. <laughs> oh, Shay really likes that one. So he likes it too. So like, this is really the intro right here. This is like the intro to to Zaddies. That that's funny to say. Check my jams, got the dope play. Back in the day, no stereo. No AC, just the radio. Freestyle flow is the way to go. But the currency and no frame go. What's she saying? I think uh, she just she's just a sit there. This is what fatherhood sounds like. For whatever the reason, she's not as comfortable with me as I would like. But luckily I'm having my own baby because my feelings would really be hurt if that was my only baby. <laughs> and if she, but if she hysterically is crying because she don't want to be around me, then it's okay, you can move her back. But yes, yeah, so I think maybe if we try like this, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Well, this is this is actually beautiful if you ask me. Um, it's me, O'Shea Woodhouse, and you've been watching the process so far. Really, what's been going on is you've been you've been on the journey of you know me trying to figure out where I'm going with my life, trying to put together the pieces, and I think it's no better time to take that next step, and that's why I want to feature. <laughs> and introduce my brother, Alec. <laughs> and really introducing Alec is really introducing um, the best father of my peers that I know because in reality, um, shout out to my dad and my mom and just my family, but he's the first friend that I have that's super close to me that I grew up with to have a baby in my friend group. And he's obviously, there's no competition in fatherhood, but he's the best at it because he did it first, and nobody was around him to tell him how to do it out of our group. We actually had to learn that he was having a kid and come with the understanding that, oh, snap, Alex having a kid? Like, are you serious? <laughs> and, and that's on some real stuff because another thing I want to do with this platform is to just be real, be straightforward, not hold back. And I would say, before I get too deep into it, um, <laughs> we'll pause here. And then I'll let Alec introduce himself. And a little a little another side note. Nala doesn't really like me at the moment. Um, she used to though. And I love kids and I'm just, I love her. Whether she's comfortable around me or not. We have proof, we have proof of her as a baby. Proof. Showing love to O'Shea, just not right now. She just, yeah. We were talking about it before. Pandemic made it a little, a little weird for her. I guess she don't meet too many people. But like you said, I'm Alec, um, man. And you know, if you watch the vlog, come from this guy, that compliment means the world. Like y'all have no idea the way this man grinds and motivates me. <clears throat> I mean, he motivates so many people. But like him just saying that, just man. It means, I mean, it means I'm doing the right thing, or I mean, at least yeah. some of the right things, being a dad, so, and, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I elaborate on that, man. It's, it's, it's simple. It's, it's one of those things to where we all, we all grew up, I would say, you could say from sixth grade until now, we all grew up doing the same things, being around the same places. I'm going to just give, I'm going to give props for props to do. Alec always had the best grades, like. I was super smart, Enrique super smart, Alec had the best grades. So from the jump, we all were like 
people that elevated each other. Um, we all played ball together. Alec was the person that put the most points on the board. Yes, you would ask me, who who did I think was the best friend of the team? Yes, I would have said me. But on the stat sheet, Alec put up those numbers and we both started together. My boy Enrique, sixth man of the year, he would come off the bench doing his thing. So we've always been hand in hand with each other and we always lift each other up where good friends and brothers do. And this is gonna lead us into the next chapter of our life. Alec led the way, fatherhood, right? From brotherhood to fatherhood, we're going to start something. It's going to be a journey. We're not gonna put a label on it just yet. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a journey through a digital experience. And we're gonna come up with the name. Um, what name is it that we think that we want? I think we're gonna go with Saddies. <laughs> O'Shea really <laughs> likes that one. But he likes it too. <laughs> Zaddies. I think y'all like it too. I think y'all will like it. And the whole Zaddy thing, it's it's a play on words. It's daddy with a Z. You're supposed to be like a sexy dad. It's one of those things to where me and Alec do what we do. Alec does what he does, I do what I do. We bring what we bring to the table, and I feel like we are deserving of the word Zaddy. If you've been following the process, you've known, you know that I'm about to have my baby. Um, I can't wait to hold my baby the way he's holding his baby. This is pure, unconditional love. I can't wait to feel that. Um, my, my fiance, Chanel, she's nine months pregnant right now. So at any minute, she could pop. <laughs> She in the office, Nala likes her, that's a good thing. So I know she's good with kids, at least one of us got it. <laughs> um, and we're gonna have our kid, and me and you started talking about this. Do you remember Do you remember how the conversation came about? Do you remember that? About how you having a kid? About how we were gonna start something to where we documented fatherhood. Yeah, it was like after you had uh, first release, like we had everybody here, it was me, you, Enrique Steez. And then that's when you told us you were having a, you were having a baby and then we just got to having conversations. We were here all night and we just brought it up. We were just like, man, we should have a podcast about being fathers and showing that process. And I think it's important. I think it's crucial because you don't see too many young fathers like us. And I think part of just being a father is having that relationship with other fathers and just sharing your experiences and just let them know it's all right to be vulnerable. Like not everything's gonna be perfect as y'all see. Like she cries, it's okay. Like it happens, it's kids. Like things are gonna happen. You just gotta adjust and do the best that you can. And I'll never forget, let me check if the camera's still on because we're, this is, this is gonna be a process in the production equipment and the actual chemistry that we're building as um, co-hosts. I'll never forget whenever they came over to the house, I had just bought the house um, with the vision of, you know, starting this family and building this empire because I really truly believe it's an empire. And Alec was talking about how as a father, he's had to learn that you can't always be like, no, no, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. He said sometimes you have to let the baby learn um, because that'll basically teach them, I guess, right from wrong. And at that moment, I was like, dang, that's so wise that I wanna talk, I wanna have more conversations about stuff like that organically as we go through this journey because I need to learn how to be a dad. I don't even know how to be a dad yet. I know how to be a, a loving, you know, boyfriend. I know how to be a provider. There's a lot of things that I know how to do. Being a dad is not one of them, but I want to experience that and learn that. And, I, and I, I'm just blessed to have Alec side by side with me to learn and to ask questions when I have those questions. Cause I don't really have anybody else that could relate to me as a male, as you know what I'm saying? We both, I mean, you see his fit, his, his fit's going crazy. And, we, and we, we, we relate in the sense that we're in the same place. Like we're both trying to figure out how to hustle, how to get money, how to build. Mm -hmm. So everything lines up to being two people that could talk about fatherhood in a, in a unique way and really just show you all an inside look at everything that's about to happen for us. Yeah, I would say I'm not nervous for this dude right here, uh, for him being a father, because like he said, he knows how to be a loving boyfriend um, and just a loving friend in general. 
So, and that's all you need when, when it comes down to it. Being a father, you just really gotta just love with everything that you are, for example. And um, yeah, man, you won't, you won't really experience the love until you have, like until you see that person for the first time. Right, baby? Okay, okay. That's yeah. real. I'm tired, huh? The full digital experience, podcast, YouTube, social media, all that's coming to y'all soon. But today, we're going to launch it through the process, through the vlog. And the process is about showing you how we come up with these things. Um, now, one of the major things that you're going to see with this right here is when fatherhood takes place, it, that takes priority. So whatever you're doing, you're a dad at all times. I'm preparing for that. And when I talk about I'm preparing for that, maybe Nala will help me. I gotta build this at some point because this is what the baby's gonna sleep in initially when they first come out the hospital. I need to learn how to change a pamper. I need to learn how to use a car seat, etc. Alec is in the heat of being a dad. How old is Nala? She's 19, going on 19 months. Well, this is one thing we gotta talk about. Why the heck do people use months after <laughs> one year? That's a good point, that's a good point. It's just... <laughs> I mean, she's a year is, and a half. Is that like the is that like the fatherhood like code to where it's like I'm really in it? And I'm 19 months in. No, because I mean, I guess that's just the way they do it. Like her appointments, yeah. She has to get checked up at six months in a year, then 18 months. So I didn't. I don't know. No, that's valid. So there's me being an inexperienced father. Every time I hear people talking about months, I'm like, dang, I know you could count. Can I just know how old she is? <laughs> but now I'm realizing that. Oh, hold on, fatherhood. Now I'm realizing that that's some information, once again, that I wasn't privy to. And it's funny because I took it as obnoxious and in reality, it's some practical use to it. That's how doctors identify with their growth, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So the reason I brought up the age thing and I wanted to let y'all know when fatherhood happens, it happens in the moment. And in the moment, I need to build this. We need to have a conversation and he needs to keep her from being scared of me. So he's doing a great job right now because she's giving me the side eye, but she's quiet. That's beauty. <laughs> the first thing I wanna talk about is, I wanna be straightforward because I wanna show you how you can know somebody basically your whole life. You can see somebody, love them, care for them, and you can always think you know what's going on and what's best for them. When in reality, you find out who you really are in the moment. When I first found out my boy Alec was having a baby, my first instinct was, well, that's amazing because I want kids, but I was like, dang, I don't know if he's ready. That's what happened to me. I thought that and I felt that and I was like, man, like, I just hope, I just hope that he, I just hope that he does what I know he can do. I hope that he does it. And that was my first instinct. How you feel about that? How do you feel that? Say, How do you feel that your brother felt that? I mean, I was gonna say that's the first time you told me that. So, and I and I don't feel no type of way about it because I mean, I feel like in the moment you were definitely right. Like, I wasn't I wasn't planning on having a child, and yeah, unlike you, I, like you were preparing for it. You actually, I think, you wanted that, and you were just set not setting the timeline necessarily, but you knew exactly what you wanted when you wanted it. Nala was coming and it was kind of all hands on deck. And so I think that's a fair assessment. Like, I think you were, you were right to have a little fear for me because I was scared as hell myself. Um, and do you, do, you, do, you, do you, I mean, do you recognize that my fear was in the sense that like, that was my first instinct because that's what I felt. But deep down I was like, I hope he can do what I know he can do. You get what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like I didn't think it was in you. I just didn't know if you were ready to take on that responsibility other than the fact that you had to. I knew that you could. Cause it's like, it's like playing basketball, bro. It's like, you have all this experience with being, you know, good at what you do. But then when the clock's ticking and you gotta make that shot, are you gonna make it? You, I hope that you're gonna make it, but you could miss it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's, that's what happened to me mentally. But as a brother, and as somebody that's a motivator, I couldn't, I couldn't just be, Enrique played that role. That's Enrique's role. You know what he's thinking about what's on his face. Um, 
He's always going to keep it 100 with you, whether it's good or not. Me, I'm going to project positive energy so I can help elevate you to where I know you need to be. That's my that's that's my role in our friendship. For sure. It's I like think, yeah, I think Enrique is more more of a realist, and he brings us down to earth sometimes. Humbles us for sure. And but I think having a baby is like one of the most real thing you could do. So I think that's why you initially had that fear, and that's why I don't blame you because it's it's a scary thing. It's a scary thing. But the reason why I brought that up is because. We can fast forward to, man, we can fast forward to maybe the first couple months. The, we can, no, we can fast forward to when I went to the hospital to, to visit the baby. I immediately, my, my instinct at the initial point was like, man, I'm nervous for him. I think that faded away quickly because I just saw, I saw something more in you and maybe in your eyes that was like, this is, this is what you're here for. Like, you're gonna be a good dad. And there's no true definition on how to be a good dad other than just being around, being there. For sure. And you locked in, you locked in more, you locked in more so than I've ever seen you lock in in the sense of career-wise. I saw you go out there, I saw you basically secure uh, some jobs, some different opportunities. I just saw things happen for you in a way that they were already happening, but they had a little bit more of a sense of urgency on them. I saw you get your own place, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I saw you be put in situations that might crumble some people, but you stepped up to the plate in every way. Um, and at that moment when I was in the hospital with you and you know, I got to hold Nala and I saw you, I was like, man, don't ever doubt this man again. Like, just don't do it. Like, even if you doubted him for three seconds, don't doubt him. Don't doubt him for another second because he's he's a real he's real about his, and that's all that matters. Bro, yeah, that's why I'm excited we're doing this podcast because what you just said is once I want to it sparks so many conversations that I want to have, and just going off initially what you were talking about, like just being there. That's the main thing, and ideally you want to be in a situation where you're at where. You have a career and you're good. You're doing. You're financially stable enough to just give give the baby whatever you need. I wasn't there at, at the point in my life. Yeah. And that's why you were like a little hesitant as to like if I could do it. And like you said, I had it. I had a lot. I had a lock in. Like I had no other option. And I feel like that's what dads need to understand. Like sometimes it's not gonna be perfect situation when you're when you're like offspring comes comes into this world, but like, you gonna have to get ready. Yeah. You gonna have to get ready. Whether you're ready or not, you gotta be ready. And so, when I was there, like during Daisy's pregnancy, um, just talking to Nala while she was in her, in her uterus, like, those are good moments. Like, those are things you have to do because the day she came on her birthday, when she came out of the womb, like she was crying, crying. And as soon as I laid eyes on her, like, Bro, like, it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. She stopped crying. She gave me a little smirk, and I'm just like, bro, I'm a dad. And I started bawling, bro. I had no yeah. shame in that, because it was like, up until that point, it was the most beautiful moment in my life. Yeah. Easily. And now look at her, bro. She's falling asleep in my arms. Like, she's going on two years. Like, it's, it flies by. You're about to have your baby boy, and it's just... It's a beautiful thing because now we can share these moments. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie, I haven't cried in a minute, but tears almost came out of my eyes on some real stuff because I, I felt I felt that energy, bro. I felt the like, man, I felt what you said in a way that, you know what I'm saying, you just had to you just had to know what he what he's talking about because the biggest blessing for me has been quarantine, has put me in a position to be home with Chanel. And to see things, maybe I don't even realize that I'm seeing, but like I have vivid memories of her stomach not showing and me telling her, I think you're showing, you're showing, you're showing, because I was so excited um, for, the, for what was growing inside of her. And now she's nine months and her, stomach's, her stomach is huge in a good way. <laughs> and I'm just like so amazed by life. So I can't wait to like see my baby for the first time. You get what I'm saying? It's definitely surreal. Like, you created, you know? It's yeah, your, you made something. It's your blood, like, as you in there. 
and, and, and this is just to go a little bit more of a backstory on my situation. Um, I mean, I'm gonna be real with y'all. Like we didn't, we didn't just plan to have a baby this year. We talked about having kids like most people do that live together. So the night that we found out, the day that we found out that she was pregnant, she had had three days of just an allergic reaction that was just making her her body and her hands and her her face, her lips, different things happen that happen when you're allergic. That was super weird. It was swelling up. Swelling up like crazy, but I ain't never seen nothing like that. Cause one, I don't even go to the doctor. Like I don't like doctors. So my first instinct is it'll go away. So I'm sleeping at 7 a.m. She wakes up and she can't take it anymore. She's like, we need to go to the ER. This is in the height of COVID. Um, she needs to go to the ER. So, you know, my first instinct is like, all right, I don't feel like going, but we need to go. So let me go, let's, let's do this. <laughs> I wanna sleep, you know? But, but I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good dude, so like, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get her from where, where she needs to be. That don't mean I gotta like it at all times. So I take her there, I'm like, all right, bet, whatever. We're in the hospital. Um, I mean, she does look like, she does look kind of like miserable. She's tired, of, she's tired of her hands being swollen, her face being swollen. So like, it is nice to see her being taken care of by people that actually can help her. Um, so we're in the ER, they do something to where they're like, um, we need to go take a pee test, whatever. She comes back, she's sitting on the thing, the nurse opens the door, she's like, um, you're pregnant. And I can tell you right now, I had no idea, one, and two, whatever happened between the first maybe five seconds of her saying that to me actually realizing what she just said, it was a quick transition from being shocked and being scared to being excited, if that makes sense. I was scared for a few seconds and I was super excited because I was like, man, this is what you wanted that you didn't know you wanted now, but this is what you got. And you, you, you like, I was like, I could do it. You know what I'm saying? I looked at her and I could tell that the first thing going through her mind, I could tell that it wasn't necessarily excitement. I could just see in her eyes that she was like thinking about it. Allergic reactions, I'm pregnant. Oh my gosh. She didn't know what to think. Yeah, like just whatever, just oh my gosh. But, I feel like my my natural energy is positivity. I don't fake it, I can't help it. So I was just ecstatic about it. And I feel like over time, I was able to really see Chanel's excitement. But in the moment, I think she just was thinking because she's a very thoughtful, you know, everything that happens in Chanel, it happens at her own pace and in her mind. and. She's not gonna give you too much here. She's not gonna do too much there. You're not gonna know. So I just think that it's a beautiful process to see us go from that moment to not planning it, to being like so excited to be parents. And I think, if she had to speak for herself, which she might not ever do on camera, <laughs> but I do. I was gonna say, we might need the episode with the, with the, with the moms. I, and I think they'll do it at some point. I think Chanel's warming up to the camera. She's probably pissed right now. Are you pissed? That's awesome. She's not pissed. <laughs> um, I just want to say that it's been, it's been so cool to be in the house. That's I'm bringing it back. To be in the house, to see her belly grow, to there's so many conversations that come out of this. To see our parents' reactions, the most beautiful reactions you can imagine. Our friends, boom, boom, boom. There's just to see all that and to be a part of it and not and not have to be at work changed my life and it's gonna take me places in this conversation later another episode it changed what i see and what i want out of life and i just want this and i want to be able to do what he's doing i want to be able to do that and i want to build for my kid and i want to build for us so this platform is our, is our opportunity to tell our story and to build our legacy that's going to ultimately put our kids in better positions than we were in um, yeah, I mean, it mainly is to help other fathers too, because hopefully y'all been listening to this and it just helps y'all with y'all situation. But it's just being there. Like, it when the baby first comes out, the big thing is uh, skin to skin and holding your baby up against your chest, 
your bare chest and just having that connection, that bonding experience, that's huge. Like, she, this girl used to fit like on my chest. Like just, she came out four pounds. She was preemie and now like seeing her this size is just so surreal and just ultimately just being like next to her every day, day in, day out. I feel like that's why we have such a strong connection. And I know this dude next to me is just gonna be there every day for his son. And so it's just exciting, man. I hope I'm, I'm excited y'all get to see us and experience this with us. It's that motivation, get your ground on. Get in my zone, 50 beats inside my iPhone. I'm putting me on, no compensation for that overtime. Plus no overshine, I can't put my name on it, so it's never mine. Uh, how they gon' modern day slave me? All this time, but they ain't paying me. Think they playing me, corporation slavery. I paid the fee, now I'm paying me.